Welcome to another video. So here I am in Hojan Bay today. And Hojan Bay is an interesting place. It is probably the biggest electronics district in the world, certainly in China. And this is where you come if you want to buy anything that's got anything to do with electronics, and I mean anything. All the way from the, the sort of component level stuff, you can get ICs and capacitors and diodes and things like that. And it goes all the way up to sort of high-end cameras and computers and, well, any kind of electronics you can think of, cell phones, etc. Uh, you can also, of course, as I've made videos about in the past, get things fixed here. You can fix your broken iPad or iPhone or Android phone, your Samsung Galaxy, you can get the screen replaced, anything like that. And of course, I even pretty much built a MacBook Pro out of parts in the past here, linked to that video. So, what am I doing here in Huajian Bay, other than just looking around because it's an interesting place? Well, I want to talk about a couple of Chinese products that are actually breaking the mold here. You know, for the longest time, when you talk about Chinese sort of made in China products, automatically it comes with a connotation that it's going to be crap, right? Or at least not going to last very long, it's going to be poorly put together, it's going to have problems, and in fact, if you look at a lot of the stuff that is sold here, yes, that is the case. A lot of it is very cheap, very chintzy, easy to break, very disposable, buy it, it'll work for a week, and then you throw the thing away. You do get a lot of legitimate products being sold here in Huajian Bay. You can get real cameras, you know, you can get good overseas international brands. They are, of course, more expensive to buy here in mainland China than, say, Hong Kong. However, when it comes to Chinese branded products, it's, it's always a letdown, you know. It's either, well, it's very hit and miss, and when it's a hit, it's usually just a semi o gay hit. However, there are a couple of Chinese products that over the recent years have really made a name for themselves for being good. And those are the ones that I'm going to talk about today. Now you can't walk 10 meters in this place without seeing some kind of knockoff drone being thrown around or flown around. They make them in so many different variants, all sorts of mini drones, toy drones, all sorts of nonsense. But of course, if you are looking to buy a real drone, there is really only one company that sells proper drones, and that is DJI. And of course, everybody knows I've done speeches for DJI in the past. Um, I was part of their new pilot program thing probably over a year ago. And I've been using drones in my videos for, well, as long as I can remember now. <laughs> About a year and a half, maybe two years, I don't know. Basically, it's become a staple of my videos. Now, the DJI drones are fantastic. Like I said, second to none. However, there are some quality control issues. I made videos about the DJI Mavic in particular. I've never seen any issues with the Phantom 4 series or 3 or uh, what else, the Inspire series is also perfectly fine. But with the Mavic there have been some issues. Although that's only with people I know who bought them here in China. People that have bought them overseas have always had a good run of luck with the DJI Mavic Pro. So I can wholeheartedly recommend DJI. They're one of those companies that are breaking the perception that Chinese products are all just cheap junk. So the next company I'm going to talk about is Huawei. Everybody should be familiar with Huawei. They make cell phones, telecommunications equipment. There have been a couple of controversies overseas about them and uh, they've been in the news a few times. But they actually do make fantastic products. I recently made a video with my friend Seamilk over on ADV China all about Huawei's sort of uh, lottery of quality, the gamble, because they've been caught out using inferior components in their phones so when they run out of the high-end RAM, they'll put in sort of cheaper, slower RAM, that kind of thing. It's a big mistake that I hope they've learned from, but if you can discount that one sort of recent thing, their products are actually really, really good. And I'm talking about, you know, their high-end cell phones. They're on par with Apple, Samsung, and all the bigger brands. Now, the next brand I'm going to talk about is actually a brand that I was unfamiliar with until very recently. Now, I've been part of some of these sort of media content creator groups here in China for a while on WeChat. You know, we talk about how to get the right shots and how to improve our videos and stuff. And this name kept coming up. 
kept popping up. By the way, if you're interested in the noise, it's people using packaging tape to <laughs> package their goods. Anyway, <clears throat> so this name kept coming up, Zhiyun, and everyone's saying, oh, I'm using the Zhiyun Crane or the Zhiyun Crane M. I didn't know what they were talking about until I went and made that Chinese people are a super friendly video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out because you'll notice something very different from my usual videos. You'll notice that, well, the, just look at the movement. And in fact, if you look at my new video about parks as well, you'll notice something different there too. Basically, my friend Globik, I'll put a link to his channel here. He helped me shoot the, uh, you know, Chinese people are super friendly video. And he had one of these Zhiyun crane gimbals. Because what they do, Zhiyun, is basically make uh, camera accessories. Things like gimbals, you know, steady cams, rigs, that kind of thing. And so he followed me around in the crowds and uh, we just randomly walked through masses of people. And he was following me. We put my A6300 camera, which is the camera I use to shoot most of my videos, put it on there. And well, I was just blown away by the results. So I asked a friend of mine who actually does a lot of uh, promotion for Zhu Yun to see if they can send me a sample and they did. So let's forget about these brands for a second and let's talk gimbals. What is a gimbal? Well guys, you know, for a while now, over a year, I've been shooting in 4K on my videos here on Serpent ZA. And uh, I've always thought that, you know, you got to move with the times and future-proof your stuff. And uh, hopefully when everybody has a 4K TV, they'll be able to actually appreciate the, the videos. Um, but it's very difficult to shoot in 4K. And that's because all the cameras that are, that are available, at least the affordable ones, don't have very good stabilization. And um, let's see. Oh. <clears throat> and I've actually wasted a lot of money buying cameras that didn't work out. For instance, this is the RX100, the Sony RX100 Mark V. And it's one of the biggest disappointments to me because, well, it shoots 4K and for a pointed shoot, look at this, it seems perfect. I thought this would be the most amazing camera ever. Uh, even after doing a lot of research on, online, it seemed like the right one, but it overheats all the time. And when shooting in 4K, it's got, well, pretty much no stabilization. I've tried to use it in a couple of my past videos. It just comes out terrible. It's too shaky, gives you motion sickness. Uh, it's just unusable is what it is, to be honest. If you wanted to shoot in 4K, you just can't do this unless it's on a tripod or unless you've got the most steady hands in the world. And it's certainly not good for the, the sort of walk and talk vlogging that I usually do. So this was very, very expensive. It's like a thousand US dollars or something like that. And it's, um, you know, I bought it and haven't used it at all and to be honest I, I was so disappointed I've been trying to sell it off at like half the price I bought it for just so I can reclaim some money but but I've been saved and I'm going to explain to you why I've been saved I have a similar problem with my um, usual vlogging camera this is the camera that I do everything with these days this is my Sony a6300 and it's in fact very good this is the kit lens and uh, it's good enough for me to do handheld stuff, but it's still very unstable. You'll notice a lot of my videos when I'm walking around, because, okay, this is literally what I'm doing, is I'm walking around like this, talking to the camera. Um, you'll notice that it's also very shaky and fairly unstable. That's because the lens, although it does have stabilization, it's not very good stabilization. This isn't the main lens I use, by the way. Um, sorry, I don't want to get off track here. I know it seems like I'm doing one of those what gear do I use to shoot videos? But that's not the case. I'm, I do have a point to all this. This is the lens I shoot the majority of all my B-roll. You know, whenever you see sort of street scenes, people walking past, it's shot on this lens with this camera. This lens is fantastic. It's got amazing, amazing picture quality. And you know, this is really, um, this camera is not, not a very uh, expensive camera. It is expensive, I'm not gonna lie, it's expensive. It's not like you can just go out and buy one. They do cost a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, when you're talking about camera equipment, it's not a very expensive camera. It's sort of a, it's an entry level prosumer. So this is the sort of setup and I've gotten very good at like holding it stable and you manually focus and, you know, doing that very slow pans and all the B-roll I get on this thing. But 
it's impossible if you just want to do some kind of run and gun, you know, like just walking around, vlogging, talking to yourself, you know, following someone on the street. If you wanted to get a pan or a tilt, it's impossible because all the 4K cameras these days lack good stabilization. And the end result, even if you're incredibly steady, is a bit shaky, will give you motion sickness. So now I can finally get to my point. This is what impressed me so much. This, this, what's in this box, this massive box, is the answer. And it's given this camera a new lease on life and my other camera. Basically, this has saved this. I know, now it's just getting a bit out of hand, isn't it? Now, this is what's called a gimbal. I'm going to basically set it up, and then I'm going to show you what it does, and then you can get my drift, and then you can also see why I'm so impressed with the quality of this thing. And that's just because it works so well. Let me get this thing out of its box, and let's get this thing set up. Right, well, let's see what's inside this box, shall we? This, ladies and gentlemen, is a gimbal. And it looks fairly complicated, because it is fairly complicated. I'm going to take it out the box, I'm going to set it up, and you'll see what it is and how it works. Right, guys, so um, this looks confusing, right? It is a little bit confusing. Bear with me while I set it up. It's, it is battery powered. It comes with these uh, two of these very big sort of lithium ion batteries, which are rechargeable. And well, you'll see in a minute. For those of you who are familiar with gimbals, I know you know what's going on here. But for those of you who aren't, stick around because it's actually kind of interesting. Um, what you do is you basically take your camera. So here I'm going to take my A6300. And uh, what I'm going to do is, you know, mount it to this device. Give me a second. It, now the trick is to actually balance. You have to basically balance your camera on here. So. Give me a sec. Okay, so you see the trick is to balance it. That's not very well balanced. So, you know, you kind of mess around with the adjustments until it's as balanced as it can be. Uh, that's fairly okay. All right, so tighten it all up. I'm going to turn the camera on. OK, so now it's all powered on. It looks kind of weird and funky, I know. But now what I'm going to do is power the gimbal on, and you'll see what it actually does. There we go. OK, now. Let me blow your mind. Well, if you know what a gimbal is, it's not going to blow your mind. But look at this. I can, I can seriously just free-handedly move around, and the camera is going to more or less stay stable. So for those kind of shots that you saw in my park video when I was going up the, the steps, you know, following my wife around, you know, you may have noticed that it looked kind of smooth and different. That's because I could actually literally get this thing down on the ground. And when it was down on the ground, I could follow her. You know, also take a look at this. If I twist the handle, it's one of the modes. It'll actually like do a slow pan left and right. So it's fantastic for, um, you know, doing B-roll pans and stuff. So <laughs> this has taken care of the shaky, horrible shaky cam situation that you get with all these 4K cameras. And, you know, any kind of high-end DSLR, if you're talking pro equipment, um, it just doesn't have good built-in stabilization. They never do. So this kind of thing gives you a stable image, and it gives you the freedom to just walk around. So uh, it's also got like a joystick here that I can move it around and point point the camera down, uh, point the camera up, and it can be slow, and you can adjust all that nonsense. So uh, it's like having a steady cam. It's fantastic. So now, if I want to look like an even bigger idiot, I can walk down the street like this, staring at my camera like this, and I could be like, hey guys, Let me turn that on actually, you guys can get a better picture. Okay, so, is that on? Oops, give me a second, turn it on. So I can be like, hey guys, I am a real big sort of strange clown guy with a massive, what looks like um, something that belongs in an adult shop, 
in his hand, walking around the street. Uh, but yeah, it stays stable. In fact, let me record that. So let's let's do this as a little as an experiment. So here we go, guys. So even if I uh, I don't know had the jitters from drinking too much the previous night or anything like that. Um, I would still have a very smooth image so I can bring the camera in take the camera out move it around There are all sorts of interesting things. You can change the mode. Don't know where that button is there. I think um, Is that the mode button? No, that's the mode button. Give me a second. You can change the mode button So now this can freely move and I can just do these very sort of interesting You know these interesting effects anyway this is not supposed to be a video reviewing gimbals. I just wanted to show you guys what I was talking about when I said it's a good quality and I do feel obliged to give you guys a little bit, bit of a review of this thing simply because they sent me a sample and uh, that was incredibly nice of them. So Jiyun is another one of those brands that's breaking the mold because after using this a couple of times and Seamilk's been using one as well, um, all I can say is that the quality the build quality and the way it works absolutely fantastic and uh, you know it's top-notch so another one of those brands breaking that stereotype that all Chinese products are junk so guys that's it for this video I genuinely do think that China is capable of making world-class top-notch products they just generally choose not to because well it costs more and it takes longer thing is there are these amazing companies that are breaking through that sort of uh, cheap made in China kind of thing so I wish them all the best of luck and I hope to see more companies like this come to the forefront thank you very much for watching can't wait to see you in the next one and until then you know the drill stay awesome